Welcome to another episode of the Tech Exception Show. My name is Ruth Yakubu, and today we have an amazing founder, Nina Suri, who's the CEO of Zopa AI. And in our conversation today, we're going to be talking about how the company is using AI and data science to eliminate bias in hiring. Nina, it's great to have you on the show. My pleasure, Ruth. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, before we start our conversation, for the viewers that are watching live, be sure to post your comments in the chat window. And at the end of the show, we'll be sure to try and get to everybody's questions. So, Nina, how is uh, Zopa, what problem is Zopa trying to solve? Um, you know, having been uh, in, in, in the uh, talent space for more than 20 years in a traditional uh, HR consulting uh, business, Ruth, um, I realized that there was a ton of, um, uh, you know, uh, inefficiencies in the hiring process. It was a very subjective process. And, uh, and due to the subjectivity, human errors, human biases, and, and uh, uh, there was a lot of scope uh, to kind of improve the way hiring is done, uh, not just for the employers, but also for the job seekers. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so this is what we are trying to solve uh, through artificial intelligence and process automation. Um, basically, um, you know, how do you augment human intelligence uh, with artificial intelligence and let machines do what machines do best and let humans do what humans do best? So the platform is, is uh, there to enable, um, and one of the biggest use cases, of course, is hiring, both external hiring, internal hiring. Uh, so the platform is able to augment um, right from uh, skill skill analysis, um, can the person do the job, uh, predict predicting, uh, you know, compatibility with the company. So will they stay with you? Uh, will they do a good job in your environment? This is by creating the persona and, um, uh, and also doing cognitive and, um, uh, you know, beh uh, behavioral presentation analysis. So, uh, so it's an end to end platform uh, that hopes to kind of really ease uh, the hiring for, for both employers and job seekers. Wow, that's amazing. It sounds like a dream come true for <laughs> a lot of people that are uh, out there um, seeking um, new positions or jobs, especially around uh, this time in COVID. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned automation. What are some of the common hiring tasks that um, Zopa automates? Yes, so we have a fair amount of robotic process automation that is built in to to ease to, to make make it very efficient. So let's start with the top of the funnel. Um, uh, it comes. It starts right from screening, uh, screening resumes. So firstly, you know, making sure all the uh, applications um, are coming into one talent pool, one common repository. First of all, um, um, you know, doing a top of top of the funnel screening uh, for CV relevance. Uh, and like I said, compatibility. So both capability and compatibility. We have patterns for those algorithms. Um, uh, from there, you know, uh, taking it, uh, uh, things like uh, automated calendar scheduling, not going back and forth with the recruiters and the, um, so automated calendar, calendaring, automated emailing. So, uh, so that, you know, there are constant notifications of, and the candidate is kept completely in the loop. Um, and uh, because that was one one big issue, um, which we used to constantly hear that candidate uh, felt disengaged, uh, did not feel included in the process, um, and uh, didn't know what was happening with their CV. Uh, they felt it was going into a black hole. So, so you know, automated uh, emailing, uh, um, shortlisting rejecting um so so i, I want to give you a little use case just to kind of elaborate how how so for example uh i'll give you know, there is a client who we recently um did did a project for so it's top of my mind so um you know they screened uh 
they probably got like thousand applications a day. Uh, so uh, automatically screening at the top of the funnel, uh, taking the uh, shortlisted candidates uh, straight into a multiple choice uh, question, uh, question and answer um, um, process, uh, which had a pass fail. Uh, so the pass then sent to the video interviewing platform, um, video and analytics and the scoring done. Uh, and then that's when the, the, uh, the recruiter or the hiring manager got involved. So um, pretty much most of the processes are quite automated from one stage to another. Um, mm -hmm. and that's seamless, yeah. And I can imagine uh, a given company or enterprises uh, getting a ton of uh, CVs or resumes coming in. Um, how does Zopa utilize AI uh, and machine learning to solve the pre-screening, because you mentioned made, yeah. uh, multiple phases. So in the pre-screening phase, how does Zopa um, utilize AI for that? Yeah, uh, so basically um, the, the, the first level of screening is about three main scores, which is about can the person do the job? So uh, do they have the skills? So it's a very skill-based assessment um, and uh, it talks about what are the capabilities of the candidate rather than, so it's all about screening people in rather than screening people out. So, the, you know, uh, and, and, and just to kind of elaborate that, if you, if you typically only use keywords, um, uh, you are going to lose some some, some pretty good candidates just because they did not use your choice of words. So we use natural language processing out here. Um, so, uh, you know, there are multiple multiple things built into those algorithms. Uh, for example, relationship. Uh, so, um, you know, it, it looks at it looks at the context of, of uh, when it looks at a statement. It doesn't just look at the key word. It doesn't just say data science. I mean, it will it will look before, it will look after. Um, so, so there are lots of those uh, natural language processing uh, details built into just to make sure that we don't screen anybody out um, uh, you know just for lack of keywords um, then uh, we we, uh, we have patterns for predictive modeling um, this is this is a great use case of, of big data um, and uh, it also gives companies outside in approach uh, to, to look at a candidate so uh, basically what it does is it compares the candidate with the with the large data so um, I just want to point out here, um, if if we try to replicate what we are already doing in the company, if a company tries to do that uh, within, uh, you know, kind of benchmarking with their own folks, uh, it's great, but it can lead to bias, right? If you, exactly. if you don't you know so that's a sample bias and uh, and and you don't know what you're missing out on so it has to be a little bit of an outside in approach it uh, it needs to be more uh, so we use very very large uh, data analytics uh, to 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 compare the candidate with with the larger cohort um, and uh, and this is where it kind of so so it takes into account the persona of the candidate first of all uh, where were you what did you study what are your hobbies uh, what kind of internships did you do what kind of association so it takes into account the entire persona of the candidate and and then uh, you know it kind of compares it with the larger data pool uh, to see what has been the stability of that candidate within that industry within that market uh, you know and in that role so it compares it with the big data and gives the so it gives you an outside in uh, feedback about how the candidate has been performing as compared mm -hmm. to her, uh, her her or his peers and mm -hmm. similarly for performance you know how how have they been uh, how 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 has their career moved compared to the outside so the so what really happens is that you're not really comparing it again with a sample bias with, with your own uh, uh, and this is where a lot of biases come in um, right. and, but when you take a very large approach and you look at very very large data pools and look at it outside in it kind of eliminates that bias and uh, uh, and how are you able to take relevant data because there's something about using historical data um yeah. not maybe the company's uh historical bias data but using bias uh i mean using data that is pertaining to the job domain that somebody is trying to get a job. So if I'm a teacher, the requirements may be different as opposed to if somebody is trying to get a job in, let's say, 
uh, finance or in computer science. So yeah, yeah, absolutely, Ruth. Um, so um, you know, it's it's taken us more than two years to to constantly evolve these models. Um, and they are generic enough uh, to so they are not uh, they they are they're fairly generic enough and can be used across um, across all industries. Uh, okay. whether it's manufacturing or technology. So it, it is not kind of biased to any particular industry. So it is, and it, it is much more generic. We managed to find, a, you know, um, uh, you know, something, uh, something that works uh, across all. Uh, talking about data from the company. So for them to do the top of the funnel um, uh, analytics, um, we don't really need their data at that stage. Uh, so we, you know, we, uh, so just, just to our mission about keeping it objective uh, we don't modify those algorithms or we don't make them bespoke for the client they are constant and we say that these cannot be changed because this is this is your large you know you are benefiting from from probably 50 60 maybe 100 million data that we have at the moment um, which so so this is a huge advantage that clients get now over and above that it's possible that they may need something which is very specific to their company and uh, I can give you an example. For example, um, there was a client in, uh, not a client, but a, a, a government body in, in Finland, for example, and, right. uh, and and they wanted a bespoke AI over and above after the first layer of screening, uh, which which talked about fit for Finland. And it right. was very interesting, you know, because they said Finland is quite unique. And we just want to make sure that whoever comes, uh, you know, because they were hiring from South Korea and the other Asian markets. And they said that, look, it's it's warm there. The weather's great. It's very lively. And now, now we are hiring from these parts of the world. How do we make sure that uh, people will adapt to, to the new environment in Finland? So, so, uh -huh. so we created a bespoke algorithm called Fit for Finland. So, awesome. so, so we may do over and above, but we do not tamper with, with our core um, algorithms. <clears throat> okay, that, that totally makes sense. Um, one thing that you also mentioned is um, in that pre-screening phase, um, there you guys are asking um, the candidates questions. So it's not just based upon the keywords, but you also take persona. Um, how is that done? Is that through a user interface? How is it through um, chat bots? Is it a phone call that you guys are, are using for the pre-screening? What technology are you guys using in that area? Yeah. <clears throat> so no, there's no phone call because as, like I mentioned, we, we let machines do what machines do best uh, and bring the humans at the right stage and use it for, for value added work. Um, so uh, uh, no, so so in, uh, that to, to create the persona, there are a couple of things. One is there are some key questions which may be very relevant for that particular job. So when you create a job on Zopa, uh, it kind of prompts you to say that are there any um, any qualifying questions like you know for example you you may want let's say if the project is for defense and and you need uh, clearance uh, you, do you have a certain you know do you, something which is mandatory right like so you there are some pre-screening questions and is then it, yeah like a chat bot uh, it, what's the interface that they're using if they're being prompted is it a bot or is it um, just a questionnaire yeah, no, it's both, um, and the choice choices with the client that uh, if if you know you you could probably insert those questions when the when the candidate is applying. So when they okay. apply, we are prompted to ask these answer these questions. But of course, to your question, um, uh, we have a chatbot. Uh, it's called Zoe, and Zoe is remarkable. Um, you know, um, it, it's able to um, to to kind of have a very natural. Uh, interaction and nat natural uh, language uh, communication with the candidate. So mm -hmm. it's able, to, for example, it's able to accept resumes. Um, it can very quickly look at the resume and if there's something missing, some relevant information which is key for that job, it'll prompt the candidate that uh, this information is missing. Do you want to share that with me so I can add it into your resume? So um, we, we use, we use uh, Louise, um, a fabulous... Oh, okay. 
Yes. Uh, so Microsoft's, um, you know, um, uh, it's it's a fabulous, fabulous um, tool. Um, Lewis um, is able to kind of, uh, you know, it 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 uses it it converts free text into a query um and uh, basically it looks at two things right it looks at the intent or the action that is needed and the object so just to okay. give you a very simple example um uh, you know find me a taxi you know uh, so find is the action taxi is the is the object so similarly uh -huh. what are the working hours in the company or uh, you know what are the key the um, skills that you need for this job or you know whatever it, it kind of interacts with the candidate and this okay. has been very cool because the candidate feels quite involved um yeah. and you know and quite engaged and uh, yeah so that, so that that totally makes sense so you guys are able to use louise um that um you're able to configure the entities um the the intent that the maybe the recruiter wants to get out of um, the person applying, then also Correct. possible utterances that the user is going to be uttering, then Louise is able to understand natural language um, and maps it to what the user is communicating with the bot on screen. That totally Absolutely. makes sense. Okay. So um, the next phase that you guys mentioned, um, you mentioned is the interview phase. So with the interview phase, um, is that um, how, what interface are you using? Is it video or <clears throat> what ch uh, channel are you guys using for the interview process? Yeah. So after we've done the screening, the next stage is, is interviewing, like you mentioned. So we uh, that that stage of the product is called room. So it's literally like going into a room, a classified room, and doing your interviews. Uh, but of course, it's all digital. It's all virtual. Uh, so it has it, it has mul it is a hybrid room. Uh, so you can do video. You can do essay you can do multiple choice um, and uh, and once again uh, you know the uh, uh, I mean, the video interview was uh, probably this this room was one of the uh, fastest selling products for us last year in covid as you would imagine because it was right. all work and it was so so scalable um uh, so uh, basically uh, the video interview um does does the offline so it's not live like a teams or a zoom it does an offline interview and the responses then go back to the recruiter but there are very cool tools here ruth which i like to point out so uh while there is the video where we want to kind of it's it's most more uh, used more for i would say uh communication and uh just making sure that you are putting a face to the name but but um, uh, the the um, and, and we use by the way we use uh, an amazing tool by Azure which is the uh, video indexer and video oh, screen and video that screening. That totally yeah. makes sense. So yeah. with the video indexer, you guys are able to capture the transcript because you mentioned is not in real time. So whatever the user is saying, you can. I know uh, video indexer is able to map uh, speech to text. That's part of the analytics it grabs. Um, also, are you guys utilizing the sentiment uh, analysis that it kind of gets from what the user is saying? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, it starts with, first of all, translators. So okay. we are able to support 72 languages. So it's not just oh, about awesome. English. 72 languages including mandarin and japanese and finnish and so on so um and the transcription can be in english um and uh and that is where we use the sentiment and the emotion analysis and it's it's fabulous because uh it gives you for for example on the emotional side it talks about uh joy it talks about uh you know, um, fear or anger and so on. And, and it, so it picks up these nuances. And uh, and from the uh, sentiment analysis, it gives you was the, uh, and I just want to kind of clarify here that all mm -hmm. these analysis are done on the text of the transcript. Right. So mm -hmm. we, are, we are very careful about not using the video for any kind of profiling. So everything is done on the text. And that's precisely the reason why we also transcribe so that you can do you can run text analysis uh, analytics on, on the text. So uh, sentimental analysis, analytics and so on. Yes. Yeah. So 
Um, I know we're uh, at time. So how do you guys prevent uh, people from cheating? If it's video, if I'm looking somewhere, how do you prevent somebody from cheating? Yeah, I love this this particular feature that we have, uh, which we which we recently introduced. It's called proctoring. It's an anti cheat fe feature, um, and it's very cool because it's been used by a lot of schools now to do their examinations and tests and so on, uh, and also for admissions and uh, you know. So it kind of is able to track any anything which is which is. So it flags. It put it it inserts flags uh, in you know through the process where it says that you might want to kind of. Uh, deep dive into this particular part of the interview because it's a person we have looked around or changed screens uh, and uh, you know um, to, to 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 type out the answers and so on. That actually brings an interesting uh, topic because what do you do for people that may have disabilities and their movement may not be like the average person? How are you? your solution not biased to people with disabilities? Yeah, um, well, we are very clear about our mission for objectivity and uh, equal opportunities. Uh, so firstly, um, like I clarified, then video is not being used for, for anything else other than text. So we rather analyze the text and the tone used in the text uh, and the words, the choice of words and so on. Uh, secondly, um, talking about disabilities and, and equal opportunities, um, we, we've now come up with, with an additional uh, initiative called Empower, uh, where and we are starting off with with creating a digital mentor and a um, you know a tool to to hire people with autism and you know again this is a section of society which is which is quite ignored uh, am i running out of time so just yeah actually off. we're okay. out of time but thank you, you so much that. yeah thank you for that. so much for your time uh today and for the viewers if you want to know more about uh, zopa just go to zopa ai and you can learn more about their solution. And Nina, thank you for joining the show. My pleasure, Ruth. It's always great to speak to you. Thank you so very much. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome.